morning, 6th Avenue, and those who are worshiping with us on this day that the Lord has made. It's a beautiful day in the Lord. It's prayer time. Will you bow with me as we talk to the God of our salvation? Holy God, almighty creator, sustainer, we praise your name. We declare your glory to those all around us. You are the creator and the sustainer of all life. And because of that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the giver of life and eternal life. We praise you. We give thanks, O oh God, that you hear our prayers and you are sensitive to every need. You are holy. Help us, O oh God, to be holy. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Come, fill our hearts with your endless love and send the wind of your spirit to blow new hope through our lives. Come, light up our souls to rise in faith, to stretch out and take in your kingdom, your kingdom all around us. Spirit of the living Lord, fall fresh on each of us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord Jesus, lift up our heads, brush away the shadows of guilt, and shine your grace into our minds. Stir up, Lord Jesus, our intellect to grasp and make wise decisions. Touch our emotions to feel and to reach out to each other as we build everlasting relationships with those all around us. We love you, Lord. We count it a privilege to be able to come to worship once again. And so, Lord, we worship you. We shake off the shackles of this fallen world and join with heaven to sing your praise. And we will declare your goodness now and celebrate your greatness forevermore. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say together, Amen. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. We serve an awesome loving, wonderful God. So come on and put your hands together as we bless his name because he's worthy of praise and the glory. Say, Lord, you are an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. Say, Lord, you are an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. Everybody say, Lord, you are an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. Lord, you're an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. That's why we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, Lord, you're an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. Say, Lord, you are an awesome God. Lord, you are an awesome God. King of kings is what you are. King of kings is what you are. We bow before your presence. We bow before your presence. We give you holy reverence. We give you holy reverence. We worship. We worship and adore you, Lord. Everybody put your hands together. Put your hands. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Praise yeah. God. The Lord 
from Japan, you can declare that he's an awesome God. Yes, Wherever Lord. you are, we want to reach you right where you are. Yes, sir. Because God is an awesome God. Can you just lift your hands right where you are, right in your room, yeah, 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 yeah. and declare, oh, I know that you may not be in your physical space of worship, amen, but you are Judah. You are his tabernacle. You can create a space of praise and worship right where you are. And we know that God is a God of joy who gives us joy, unspeakable joy. Some of you may feel that you're distraught right now. You may feel that because of this virus and this pandemic that we're in right now that there's not any hope. But I want to declare and prophetically speak to you wherever you are that the joy of the Lord is yes. your strength. Yes, sir. Release the sound of the worship. Release it. Come on, open your mouth and begin to worship right now, wherever you are. Come on. With the fruit of your lips, give up joy. We give you glory. We release our praise in this place. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. 
There's freedom, no, you can't There's freedom, no, you can't trap me. I've got joy. I've got joy instead of more. Can we sing that again? There's beauty in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, no, you captured me. There's, There's freedom, no, you captured me. I've got joy. I've got joy instead of mourning. Listen. Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul. 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 Cause you give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. There's beauty in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love. It's there. Of pain. There's freedom, though you capture me. There's freedom, though you capture me. I've got joy. I've got joy instead of more. Come on, let's come out again. There's beauty in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, though you capture me. There's freedom, though you capture me. I've got joy. I've got joy. Joy instead of morning. Let's sing this song. Cause you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Oh, yes, down deep in my soul. Cause you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Give me joy right now. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Listen to this. I never been so free calling your love for me. You love me. I never been more secure knowing you're so glad you love me. Never been so free. Never, never been, been so free calling your love for me. Never been more secure. I never been more secure knowing your heart. I never been so free. I never been so free calling your love for me. Never been more secure. Never been more secure knowing your. I've never been so free. I've never been so free. Your love I've never been more secure. Never been more secure. Knowing your heart. Cause you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Cause you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Come out and give a worship. Come on, we give the joy. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Oh, we honor your name, oh God. Oh, we lift up your name. Come on, release the sound of worship right where you are in the room. Come on, release the sound of praise. Come on, release the sound of worship. Come on, open up your mouth to give a glory. We worship you. We glorify your name. We bless your name. Come on, come on, one more time. Give a glory. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, you give me joy. You give me joy. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul. 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 You give me joy down deep in my soul. 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 Come on, 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 
Oh, we go. It's okay to worship right where you are. It's okay to wave your hands and declare that you got the victory. It's the way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Holy God. Bless your name. We love you. The gift of protection. We love you. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and give them praise. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord, for your joy. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Psalms, the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Scripture reading taken from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 10. Hear ye the word of God. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. And verse 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Good morning once again, my brothers and sisters. This is the first Sunday in the month of November. And we recognize all those who are celebrating birthdays during this month. I hope that wherever you are on this day, that you know that the members of Sixth Avenue, we say together, happy birthday. And may you have many, many more birthdays. I want to say to you today as we continue in worship today to go ahead and get your elements as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Get your bread and your wine and set it aside as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper at the end of our sermon today. We want to remember all of those who are sick and shut in. We want to remember the Willa Dean Hawkins. We want to remember our own Deacon Lawrence Davis, as he continues to recover, we pray God's healing blessings upon his vocal cords. And we want to also pray prayers on behalf of Morton Moore, his wife, Rochia. We want to remember him. He had surgery, and he's continued to recover. We want to also remember the Piggies, Tyrone Piggies family. Tyrone went home to be with God, and we celebrated his life uh, on this past week. So let's go to God in prayer, and we want to remember our pastor as he prepares this morning to share the good news of the word of God. Heavenly Father, Prince of Peace, mighty God, we thank you, God, for being here with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, that you would stretch forth your hand 
of healing and that you would touch those who are sick, those who are weak and afflicted. Lord, I pray that you would make them whole again, that you would just allow them to know without a doubt that they are not alone, Lord Jesus. Lord, for those who are grieving, Lord Jesus, embrace them. And God, we pray that you will carry them during these days of sadness. In the moment when tears are rolling down their eyes, help them to know without a doubt that you are with them. Lord Jesus, we give thanks, God, for the opportunity to be in worship on this day. Bless us and guide us. And Lord, as our nation prepares to vote, this coming week, I pray, God, that you will move on all of us in Sixth Avenue, in our communities, all around us, across our nation, and even in our world, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that you will help us to go to the polls and cast our vote. Give us discernment. And Lord Jesus, as our pastor prepares to stand before us once again and declare your truths. I pray, God, that you would hide him behind the cross of Calvary and that you would speak mightily through him. Lord Jesus, may your word move from the pages of your word, Lord, and penetrate our hearts and our minds, God, that we might be more like you through Jesus. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I want you to be remindful uh, once again that if you need a ride to the polls next week, please do not hesitate. We stand ready. Give us a call at 205-321-1136 or 205-321-1137. And we will be counted 100% at 6th Avenue that all of our members will be going to cast their vote. If you have not already voted, we pray that you will go on November 3rd on Tuesday and cast your vote. It's important that we do it. Let's do it. Let's do it with a smile on our faces. Amen. Now, we want to remind you as well that the Alzheimer's Walk will be this coming Saturday, November the 7th, right here on our parking lot. And we hope that you will come and wear your mask and that you will walk in remembrance or in in the knowing of those persons who might be struggling with this disease. And I pray, God, that God will help remind all of us how important it is for us as we remember those who suffer from Alzheimer's. Now, I want you to know, too, that today is November the 1st, the first Sunday in November. I hope and trust that you will stop by our our facility today, today and buy a meal or two to help that ministry. But, you know, get in your car right now and come on over and buy a meal. Uh, such that you won't have to go someone else, go somewhere else and purchase a meal, but you can get one right here at Sixth Avenue. To God be the glory, and we trust and hope that many of you are continuing to study the word of God in small groups, that you will continue to uh, be participants in small group ministries, and that you will as well continue in small prayer groups Casting your cares upon the Father as God cares for all of us and all of our needs. There's nothing too small, nothing too big that our God cannot handle. So let's talk to him and let's listen to him and hear what he is saying to us. We thank every one of you who so faithfully give your tithes and your offerings week after week. Uh, whether it's online or whether you come by and drop your offerings and your tithes off, we want you to know that we are thankful. I want to say another note about giving, that if you give online, listen, if you want to stop receiving the envelopes uh, in the mail, the quarterly mail out, 
Give us an email. Give us a call and let us know that we can stop sending you those uh, uh, quarterly mail outs. So help us to know that we can take your name out of the quarterly uh, mail out for those of you who want to stop receiving those envelopes if you give online. Of course, we want to say to you, because questions have been raised, can we mail our contribution in? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You can mail it in at 1101 Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, uh, Southwest 35211. As we continue in worship today, may God's spirit rest upon us and don't forget, come by, drive through, and buy a meal. In Jesus' name, amen. Throughout Scripture, our God consistently commands His people to care for the marginalized, the weak, and the abandoned. In doing so, 
we, the body of Christ, demonstrate his character and his gospel with at least 153 million orphaned and vulnerable children in our world the command to care for the fatherless is not to be left for the next generation it's not for next year's mission trip it's not for next month it's for today and every day after we must learn more about the needs of the vulnerable we must advocate we must defend those who cannot stand up for themselves. We must give so that domestic and international ministries can continue in this work. We must open our hearts and our homes. Church, you may be asking, but how? How can I? How can we? Orphan Sunday is all about raising awareness for the plight of the fatherless, communicating God's call, and finding practical ways to respond. So. Brothers and sisters, today, let's not take God's command lightly any longer. Let's start here. Together. Good morning, uh, my brothers and sisters. Let's be to sure, let's be sure to lift up in prayer. Uh, Laura White uh, and David White, her husband. Laura's father, uh, Mr. Michael Perry, uh, passed away. And so we want to be sure uh, to lift that family up, particularly Laura, uh, during this season of transition. And also, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of uh, our Monday morning devotion tomorrow at 7.15 a.m. in the morning. Uh, you can tune in to Zoom and of course, we have the meeting ID and uh, we have the passcode on the website and we should have it on our announcement screen this morning as well. But if you don't have Zoom, that's OK, because there should be a number that you can call in and you can listen in to our Monday morning devotion beginning tomorrow, November the 2nd at 715 in the morning. Well, good morning, 6th Avenue. I hope that you are blessed this morning as we worship the Lord right here virtually. I don't know about you, but my soul and my heart desires and thirst after God. As we prepare for the word of the Lord, I hope that you came and you tuned in today expecting a word from the Lord. And I want to sing this song from David who wrote in the Psalms and when he was in a drought place and he needed to hear from God. And it goes like this. As the deer panted for the water so my so long it after thee you alone call my heart desire and I long As the deer pant for the water, so my so long it thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long. my 
my shield to you along was my spirit yield you along are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Uh, our text uh, this morning is taken from Gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, Matthew the 16th chapter, uh, verses 24 through 27, and Mark the 10th chapter, verses 42 through 45. Of course, uh, the text is right there on our screen. And now uh, let's read from the Word of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Now let us look at Mark uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 42 through 45. From the word of God. Jesus called them, he called his disciples together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. May the Lord bless the hearing and the reading of his holy word. Uh, let the people of God say amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, let's, let's go to God together in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we're thankful, Lord, uh, for this day. We're thankful, Lord, for this day of worship. We're thankful, Lord, for another day of your goodness. We're thankful, Lord, for another day of your tender mercies where you have given us another chance not only to hear a word from you, but, but to get it right. We ask right now, Lord, uh, that you would speak to us through your word. And even as Moses, Lord, ascended on the mountain and in humility, he took off his shoes and he bowed down before you. Likewise, Lord, symbolically, even as Moses did, we bow down before you. We ask that you would speak to us. Speak to us now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let the church say amen. Amen. The subject uh, our, of our text this morning is, what does it take to follow Jesus? What does it take to follow Jesus? Last week, my brothers and sisters, we drew from a portion of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, where Paul made it clear to the church 
that no believer should put any man, even if that person brought them to faith in Christ. He said, no believer should put any man or woman above Christ. I don't care who they are. And if you remember in the text, Paul called out some names, didn't he? He said, he said, whether it's Peter or Apollos or even me, he said, we are nothing. We are just servants through whom God has worked. We are just servants whom God has used to plant his seed and to water his seed. But God is the one because the seed belongs to him. God is the one who causes the seed of his word to grow. So even though God worked through us, Paul wanted them to know that God was the true source of their blessings. Now, you know, when I said that, my brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean that you don't give honor to whom honor is due and that you don't give respect to whom respect is due. It has nothing to do with that, right? You should honor and respect those who serve the Lord. But the word of God and the Christian life is about balance, isn't it? And the issue, the issue that Paul had to deal with is that the Corinthians, they were allowing their imbalance, their, their unbalanced allegiance to men to divide and tear apart the church among the other issues that they had to deal with. And so Paul, Paul said to them, he said, that attitude is not of God, but it is a worldly or a carnal attitude. And you know, those scriptures led me to share Galatians chapter two, verses 20 with you, where, where Paul said, he said, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, he said, but Christ lives in me. He said, the life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And we talked about that, you know, on last week. And so this morning, this morning, I want to share with you the same concept that Paul talked about but I, when he talked about uh, being crucified with Christ, I want to talk about that same concept, but I want to use the words that Jesus shared with his disciples in our text this morning. So let's look again at verse 24 of Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, uh, it says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. He went on to say, he said, for whoever wants to save uh, their, and I'm going to say current life, will lose it, right? But whoever loses their life or whoever is willing to give up their current life for me, he said, will find it. Now, Jesus said this, I want you to understand that Jesus said this to the disciples right after he told his disciples uh, that he was going to be crucified and killed by the religious leaders and that on the third day he would be raised again to life. That is the context in which Jesus was speaking to them. He spoke to them first about his own crucifixion and he was saying to them, he was saying to them, if anyone wants to be my disciple, if anyone wants to follow me, then they're going to have to walk the same path that I walked. They're going to have to go through the same things that I went through. They're going to have to deny themselves of certain things like I did, like I denied myself in order to get to this point in life. In other words, Jesus was saying, they're going to have to give up some things just for me, uh, just like I gave up some things for God in order to do his will. Jesus was saying, I gave up some things. I had to leave some things behind in order to follow my God and my Father. And so in that vein, in that vein, my brothers and sisters, uh, to deny yourself is really to leave this world culture behind like Jesus did in all of its forms. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Abraham in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Abraham left his homeland. He left his culture where there were many gods with the lowercase g. He left his culture and he went to the land of Canaan to serve the one true living God. Now, now you may not have to leave your home setting like Abraham did, but if you're going to follow Jesus, you will have to distance yourself inwardly from a culture whose mindset is to serve itself. Like the Bible says, you may be in the world, but you've got to make sure that you are not of the world. Listen, listen. 
Our culture's mindset and attitude is to do whatever makes you feel good, right? Do whatever you want to do. And if you want something, then just go after it. There's no need to deny yourself of anything. Just indulge in whatever it is you want to do, but just do your best at it. That's why, that's why what Jesus says in our text appears to be so hard from the world's perspective. But, but what Jesus is really saying is, he's saying, don't be consumed with yourself, but give yourself to God and be consumed with him and his ways. That's why Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew, the sixth chapter. And now listen, he didn't use the word to not deny, but he used a different word. Matthew, the sixth chapter, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you need, he said, they will be given to you. And you won't have to consume if you seek God first. You will not have to be consumed with pursuing your needs and your wants when you are consumed with seeking God and his kingdom because God will make sure that you have everything you, you, that you need. Does that make sense to you, my brothers and sisters? So now, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of what Jesus means when he says, if you want to be my disciples, you must deny yourself. Well, I already talked about Abraham. Abraham, uh, he left his homeland of Ur behind and he traveled now about 3,461 miles on foot now to serve God in the land of Canaan. Now, he didn't travel that distance all at once. He stopped for a period of time in Haran. But I said all of that so that you might get a better perspective of the extent to which Abraham followed God. All right. But the main example that I had in mind are the 12 disciples to whom Jesus spoke these words. Listen, the disciples, the 12 disciples that we talk about all the time that follow Jesus, these disciples, they gave up everything to follow Jesus. And when I say they gave up everything, I mean they quit their jobs to follow him. For example, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, they were fishermen, but they stopped being fishermen in order to follow Jesus. The Bible tells us that Matthew, he was a tax collector, but Matthew actually gave up his job as a tax collector to follow Jesus. They left, they all left something behind to follow our Lord. Now, to be quite frank with you, my brothers and sisters, I imagine, I imagine they were dissatisfied uh, with where they were in life in the first place. I imagine they were already dissatisfied because, you know, the Lord has a way of helping us to see the futility and the emptiness of a life without him. And so when Jesus came along, he gave his disciples, I'm sure of it, he gave them a greater sense of purpose and meaning in life. And so when Jesus said to the people, when he said, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. He was saying, if you leave your life behind, I have a better life to give you because really without the Lord, life is meaningless. And that's what really the book of Ecclesiastes is all about. If you remember, uh, uh, Solomon King Solomon was the wisest and he was the richest king uh, that Israel ever had. And, and Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter two, and I quote, Solomon said, he said, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure and I took delight in all of my work. Yet when I looked at all that my hands had done, and what I had worked to achieve, I realized, Solomon said, that everything was meaningless. I realized it was like I had been chasing after the wind. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Life, my brothers and sisters, without the Lord is like chasing something that you will never, ever be able to obtain or hold on to. Life without the Lord is a lot of striving for nothing. Nothing, right? And you can try to give the things that you are pursuing in life meaning 
I mean, you can try to do that, but without the Lord, I'm here to tell you, you are just going to wear yourself out and wear yourself down. But Jesus comes along and he says to us, give up that kind of life. Let it go and follow me. See, the Bible, the Bible tells us about a, a rich man who really wanted to follow Jesus and learn from him, right? But when Jesus told him to sell all that he had and give it to the poor and he would have treasure in heaven and after he had done that, then he could follow him. It tells us that, that this man went away very sad because he was very rich. And that led Jesus to tell his disciples and talk about with them how hard it is for a rich man or a wealthy man to enter the kingdom of God. And then when Peter heard all of this, Peter said, and I just love it, Peter said to Jesus in Matthew, uh, the 19th chapter, verse 27, Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, he said, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? What are you going to, what are we going to get out of this, Lord, if we follow you? And in verse 28, Jesus said to them, he said, truly, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel, verse 29. And he says, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake, Jesus said, you will receive a hundred times as much and you will inherit eternal life. Isn't that something? If you follow me, Jesus said, you will receive a great reward, but the most important thing that you're going to receive is everlasting life. So you see, my brothers and sisters, the first disciples of Jesus, they left everything to follow him. Now, 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 they did not leave their wives and their children in the sense of abandoning them. I, I want to set the record straight. Uh, I, I want you to make, I want to make that clear to you. Uh, the Bible lets us know that they, that they still had their wives and they still had their families. But, but those disciples, they did travel with Jesus everywhere he went all over Israel, miles and miles of traveling on foot or by boat, which means that there were many nights when they were not at home with their families. There, there were sacrifices that had to be made in order to follow the Lord Jesus. And so we can say what we want to about Peter and James and John and the rest of the disciples. We can talk about them all we want to. We can talk about their shortcomings, right? We can talk about the mistakes that they made. We can talk about how at times they just could not understand what Jesus was talking about. We can talk about Peter and how he denied the Lord Jesus. We can talk about James and John and how they might have had a temper problem when they wanted to destroy a Samaritan village. We can talk about those things, but we cannot talk about their commitment to Jesus because they were committed to the Lord 100%. They were committed to Jesus 100 percent. And it was because of their commitment. It was because of their commitment that their shortcomings and the mistakes that they made did not uh, prevent Jesus in the least bit from using them in a mighty way. He could be, he could use them. Why? Because they were 100 percent committed to the Lord. Right. The disciples, look at this. They, they gave the Lord all of their time. And they left everything. They left the way that they used to live behind them. They left, they left a life of, of vanity, a life of meaningless, a life of emptiness in order to follow the Lord and learn from him. Jesus said, he said, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. So now, when you read this, we must understand there is an aspect to what Jesus is saying that is meant to weed out the uncommitted, right? Because, you see, when you listen to Jesus, if you don't have the eyes to hear or the ears to see what he says, when he says it like that, it will definitely keep you away. 
It's only when you get to the point that you recognize how futile life is without the Lord that you will begin to hear and hone in on what Jesus is saying. But as long as we think that we know more about life than Jesus does, then when he says, when he says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, then we will not be able to hear him. Now, in Mark the 10th chapter, Mark the 10th chapter, Jesus gives us another perspective on what it means to deny yourself. He uses himself as an example. And he said, he said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, he said to his disciples, because they began to argue about who was the greatest and who would sit at his right and left hand in the kingdom of God. Jesus said to them, he said, even the son of man did not come to be served. He didn't come to be wine and dine. He didn't come to be catered to. He didn't come uh, for people to roll out the red carpet to him. He didn't come to be spoiled, right? But he came to serve. He didn't come to be indulged, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And here in this text, Jesus, he was telling his disciples that being great is not just about sitting on a throne in a high position, barking out orders and telling people what to do. Being great is not just about that. But he said it's about working. It's about working to meet the needs of those and lift up those around you, right? You know, as long as you're sitting down, right, you are being indulged, you're being catered to. But when you stand up, when you begin to move around, when you begin to serve, you are putting what you want aside. You are putting what you want behind you to focus on what someone else needs. So again, so again, that is denying yourself, right? Uh, it's, it's serving is uh, forgetting about your position so that you can pay attention to and work on what is really going on around you, right? So if you really want to follow the Lord, then my question is, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice? You know, if you've never sacrificed anything for the Lord, then how can you even begin to understand him? How, you, how, how can you begin to understand his life and understand his commitment to the Father, understand his commitment to saving you from sin? How can you understand or know who the Lord is if you are not willing to sacrifice anything? How can you understand the heart of Christ if you've never sacrificed anything uh, for him or for anyone else? How can you really respect or love the Lord if you have no idea what he went through in order to bring you salvation? You see, the early church, to the early church, uh, the cross was more than a symbolic chain uh, that went around your neck, right? Uh, it was more, it's more, than just, more than just a cute symbol on your earrings or a pin uh, that, that you wear on your lapel or your dress. But the cross or denying yourself to the early church, it was a way to experience greater fellowship with Jesus. It was the way now that the Holy Spirit on the inside of you uh, gave, gave the, it, was, it was a way that the Holy Spirit on the inside of a believer uh, gave that believer access to the mind and to the heart of Christ. And it was also the way that the Holy Spirit, and that's Christ living on the inside of you, it was also the way that the Holy Spirit now prepared a person to experience and live in the power that Jesus promised to give his disciples at Pentecost. If you cannot commit to doing what God wants you to do consistently, then how or, or even why do you expect God to use you in a mighty way? Why do we keep expecting breakthroughs when we can't even follow Jesus for a solid month? I want you to understand that the disciples, they followed Jesus for consistently for three and a half years. You know, some people, some people with great wealth, I'm told, they decide not to give their children, their inheritance immediately. 
They hold, they hold some things back until their children learn what it really takes, or at least they learn some of what it takes to have to work hard and, 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 and serve and earn a living in this world. They do that so that they will gain a greater appreciation of their inheritance when they finally do receive it. Now, if we're going to follow Christ, right? If, if we want, I mean, if we really want to know who he is, and if we really want to know what is on his heart and what is on his mind, then in some ways, we're going to have to walk the same pathway that he walked. We're going to have to experience some of the same things that he experienced. We're going to have to leave behind the things that Jesus left behind. We are going to have to deny ourselves of some things like he denied himself in order to receive this great inheritance that he has already prepared for those who love him. Now, my question to you this morning is what are you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave behind? I know that some of us, I know some of us have been believers for years now, but there are still some things perhaps that we need to leave behind. Some of us like Abraham, uh, when he was in Haran, we are stuck between Ur and the land of Canaan. But what does it take to follow the Lord and inherit his promises? Tell you what it takes it takes a willingness, it takes a willingness to give up those things that are a part of a life that does not know Christ. A willingness to give up those things that are a part of life, a part of a mindset that has not yet embraced Christ. We have to give up those things or that thing, whatever it is, for Jesus so that we can experience what, tri uh, what true life is is all about. Jesus said, he said, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me and you will receive a hundred times more in the life to come and you will be granted everlasting life in me. Amen. The doors of the church are open, my brothers and sisters, and we invite you to become a part of us. Uh, if you don't have a church home, we, we want you to prayerfully consider this church uh, as, as your choice. Now, if you've never given your life to the Lord, I want to encourage you to do that right now. I want to encourage you to put uh, your faith and put your life in the hands of the Lord Jesus. If that's something that you want to do right now, why don't you pray with me? And you can pray this prayer after me. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus gave me another chance. I believe that he was raised from the dead by your power. He took all of my shame and all of my guilt away and Father, I thank you right now. Receive me as one of your children. Receive me into your family. Receive me as a citizen of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you prayed that prayer, and I wanted you to know that, that you, by faith, you have been received into the kingdom of God. But there are still some things that you need to do. You need to be baptized. You need to be identified with the life and the death of the Lord Jesus. That's a part of what baptism is all about. And you need to join a church family where the word of God is taught, where it is preached, so that you can learn the promises that God has for you and so that you might learn how to live out the life that Christ would have you to live. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you to become a part of this church. 
Like my pastor used to say, we're not a perfect church, but we're striving to be all that God would have us to be. We're striving to give our all to the Lord. And when you're doing that, yes, you might make mistakes here and there. Yes, you're going to have shortcomings, but that will not prevent the Lord in the least bit from using you in a mighty way. We invite you to come to us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we're going to partake of communion. We're going to commune with the Lord. We're going to remember uh, what he did for us uh, at the Lord's Supper the last night before he was crucified. So pray. We want to pray this prayer as we prepare our hearts to receive communion. Now, Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 As we eat symbolically the bread and the wine, we become new creatures in his sight. His body, this bread symbolizes our Lord's body. His body was broken so that our bodies might be healed. His blood was shed so that our sins might be forgiven. The Bible says, Jesus said to the 12 as he sat down with them, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and they said, Lord, is it I? And he took the bread and broke it and he blessed it. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body. And then the scripture says he, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, drink all of it. He said, for this is my blood, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I will not drink of this fruit of, of the vine with you again until I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Of course, we can't go out into the Mount of Olives today, but we can go out into the highways and byways of Birmingham or wherever we matriculate. And we can let others know that Jesus lives and he has made a difference in our lives. My brothers and sisters, may God continue to richly bless you. And until we see each other again, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and deliver you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy, unto him be power, majesty, and dominion now, henceforth, and forever. Let the church say amen, amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. Throughout Scripture, our God consistently commands His people to care for the marginalized, the weak, and the abandoned. In doing so, we, the body of Christ, demonstrate His character and His gospel. With at least 153 million orphaned and vulnerable children in our world, the command to care for the fatherless is not to be left for the next generation. It's not for next year's missions trip. It's not for next month. It's for today and every day after. We must learn more about the needs of the vulnerable. We must advocate. We must defend those who cannot stand up for themselves. We must give so that domestic and international ministries can continue in this work. We must open our hearts and our homes Church, you may be asking, but how? 
How can I? How can we? Orphan Sunday is all about raising awareness for the plight of the fatherless, communicating God's call, and finding practical ways to respond. So, brothers and sisters, today, let's not take God's command lightly any longer. Let's start here. Together.